guys. It's day 24 of 100 ways to motivate yourself. And this is awesome. Day 24 is how I, I couldn't live without the insight of day 24. Day 24 is called run your own plans. Let me just make sure my volume's up, guys. Okay, good. So diving right in. I could teach a class on day 24. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Um, so day 24 is called run your own plays. And it's basically about planning your life, which if you've been following me, I've been doing the 100 uh, ways to motivate, motivate yourself for the last, you know, 24 days. And day 24 just brings day one full circle because it's all about planning. Um, I'm just going to dive into my notes because this is another gold nugget. Design your own life's game plan. Let the game respond to you rather than the other way around. So basically, you can either plan your life or you can let your life plan you, which is basically just letting life happen to you. You have a choice. They, he, the author goes into um, a story about football. He does a lot of sports references. Hi, how are you? He does a lot of sports references, and um, I'm not a sports person, <laughs> so I'm learning about sports through this. But he talks about Bill Walsh. He was the former head coach of the San Francisco 49ers and how he was known for being a very well-planned coach, meaning he had all of his game plans in hand, excuse me, in hand. So before every game, he had every play that his team was going to play already done. And he noticed that a lot of the other cult or coaches were just kind of responding to how the other teams were playing. And then they were actually going and modifying and doing things based on how the other coaches or how the other team was playing, but not Bill Walsh. He was pretty notorious for, um, he was notorious for having plans, but he was also notorious for winning a lot of Super Bowls. So the strategy won him a lot of Super Bowls. And what he did in planning everything out was the crucial difference between how he won and how other coaches didn't win. And his theory was you can either create or you can react. And I just think that's amazing. And I was looking at... Um, I was looking at the word creation and the word reaction, and it's an anagram. Do you guys remember anagrams from middle school? An anagram is where you can take the word and you can move the letters around. Creation and reaction are an anagram. And if you think about it, creation is the action or process of bringing something into existence, whereas reaction is an action performed or a feeling experienced in response to a situation or event. So think about your life. Are you just reacting to life or are you creating your life? Because you have complete authority to create it. So just assess if your goals and everything is not in alignment. If your life is not in alignment for the goals that you have for your life, then it could be because you're just reacting. You haven't spent the time creating it. Um, the author goes on to talk about how most of us spend our days in reaction. Think about your day today or even just yesterday. You, you, you spend your time reacting to your boss, reacting to email, reacting to traffic, reacting to kids. Um, but we don't see our, we don't realize that our life is like a piece of clay. We have the ability to really kind of mold it and to make it be what we want it to be. It's just a matter of realizing that we have authority to command the control. It's just a matter of taking the time and making the time. When your life itself becomes the subject matter of the creative process, a very different um, experience of life opens to you, one in which you are involved with life at its very essence. So, you know, if you start to see your life as a creative process, as opposed to just something you have to react to, start to dive into it and let it be your art form. Plan your day the way that Bill Walsh, the pro football coach, planned his football games. See the tasks ahead of you as plays that you're going to run. You'll feel involved in your life at its very essence because you'll be encouraging the world to respond to you instead of you constantly responding to your world. If you don't, chose, if you don't choose to do that, the life you get won't be an accident. Think about that. 
The life you get won't be an accident. You'll get what's kind of coming to you because you didn't plan it. Um, when you don't make a choice, you've made a choice. Think about it. You can either choose or not choose. And by not choosing, you've chosen. Um, so some examples of how this has manifested in my life. Most recently, over the summer, we moved into a new home and I, you know, I had a lot going on at that time and I was new to being a stay-at-home mom and I was used to, you know, a career, blah, blah, blah. And now we were in a new house, a new mudroom, kids coming in, a new whatever, everything was new. Um, and when the kids would come home from school, it was chaos. And that chaos, me not having a plan of them coming home, led to stress, yelling, frustration, and then wine. <laughs> And wine was in direct contrast to my weight loss goals. So instead, I realized, okay, I need to start planning out my days more. And I need to start planning for the kids to walk through that door an hour before their arrival. I know that sounds like a lot, but when you have three kids going 100 miles per hour, um, three kids going 100 miles per hour, you need to have a strategy. They're going to be hungry. They're going to have homework. They're going to be tired. They're going to be cranky. They're going to have drama. I have two girls, okay? They're going to have drama. They're going to have whatever, insert whatever. If I don't have a plan and anticipate it, then I better plan for chaos. So what I did was um, I started putting some structure into the come home transition from school to home routine. And it worked wonders. It not only affected our stress level, but it allowed me to actually start implementing AM and PM routines. And so they would come home from school. They would know that there was a little bit, a 15 minute break of just chill out, go to your room, have some time out time. Mommy and you will have some talk time about your day. After that, um, we're gonna dive into homework, have a, have a snack, not a major snack, but have a little snack. Um, and then we actually got to the point where, excuse me, somebody's texting me. We got to the point where it started working so much that we were having family game night. My girls and I, we started doing date night with each other, with the kids. Um, we started doing our nails. I have two little girls. We're doing nails now. It's so sweet. But that's only because I anticipated, I learned about the chaos and I anticipated chaos if I didn't plan for structure. And so as a result, it's, it's reduced my drinking of wine. I only have like a glass of wine now on Friday or Saturday nights and it's not a requirement anymore because life is more controlled and I don't even have to say that it's controlled chaos. The kids know what to expect, I know what to expect. And when I worked, a way that I, when I was in corporate America, a way that I got ahead of things was I would take a day off of work, you know, like once or twice a quarter. And I would, you know, like do a trapper keeper for moms. I don't know about you guys, but I remember trapper keepers when I was in elementary school. And I can tell you that as a mom, I need a trapper keeper now. <laughs> so, you know, like once a quarter, I would just like organize everything between, you know, what's working, what's not working, what needs to have some attention, where bills need to be brought. Just have a plan because if your life, if your house is chaotic, your life is going to be chaotic. So I found that there was an absolute need and then I spun that into started doing PM plans. When we have a nighttime plan and we set the stage for the next day, the next day has a wholly, completely different tone for the day. So the message today is start planning your life or your life is going to plan you. I have two parting quotes that I've um, looked up for you guys. So the first quote is, nobody ever wrote down a plan to be broke, you know, without money, to be overweight, to be lazy, to be uneducated. Those things all are what happen when you don't have a plan. So nobody ever wakes up in the morning and says, I, you know, I want to be overweight today and I want to have, I don't want to have enough money to pay my bills. And, um, you know, nobody ever wakes up and says, those are my goals. That's just what happens when you lack a plan. And my parting quote for you is, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So start planning your future. If your life is not going in the direction that you want it to, it's because you failed to plan. There's still time for you. You're still breathing. Now's the time. Start planning your days. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.